We're continuing with Zen Flesh and Bones. This is story number 21, The Sound of One Hand. The master of Kinenji Temple was Mokurai, translated as Silent Thunder. He had a young protege named Toyo, who was 12 years old. Toyo saw the master's disciples come in to visit him each morning and to receive instruction, to work on their koans, and he wished to do sanzen too, to do interview too. So first off, <clears throat> in the Zen tradition, face-to-face teaching has always been very much admired. The ability to actually look somebody in the eye and to actually talk and directly be with them. Now, in the age of Zoom, we have to do the best we can do. Or, for example, if a teacher was a master at a Chinese temple that had a thousand students, you do the best you can do. But it is the direct engagement, the direct connection, the relationship, the expression of non-dual, which is vital. In the Zen tradition, the ritual, the form, the shape, of personal interviews called doksan or sanzen is a part of a living community. <clears throat> and it's done different ways. Some people uh, who are working on particular kinds of koans will go in to see a teacher sometimes three times a day, just really briefly. Koan, answer. Koan, answer. Koan, show me. And sometimes with a a more um, less sharp style. There may be more sitting together in oneness, perhaps clarifying, perhaps dissolving obstructions. Lots of ways, lots of styles, depending upon the teacher and depending on the teacher's understanding. So, here's a young person who saw people going into Sansan really regularly. And he said, I'd like to do this too. What are they doing in there? I'd like to do this too. And so he went to his teacher and said, you know, let me join this. And the teacher said, no, 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 a little too, a little too soon. So, finally, after enough uh, inquiry, um, he showed up. Now, it's interesting that in one way, nothing is free. I mean, the truth is just the truth, and that's all that we're made of, and that, of course, there, there is no buying or selling, there is no getting. Or, but to understand something personally takes investment takes time. And so, in our particular modern culture, we say, I want that. Here's $100. Give it to me. Oh. Unfortunately, with the spiritual life, it doesn't work like that. There's got to be some, some juice, some power. Even with a really good teacher, you've got to meet them halfway. So, half of the work at least, I mean, looking generously at it, has got to be done by us, by the student. We have to bring ourselves forward. We have to face our fears. We have to be determined. And a lot of people don't want to do that work. You know, if they say, yeah, give it to me, I'll, I'll flip, I'll surf the internet until I find somebody who speaks the truth and I think, yes, that's great, <clears throat> and I'm so inspired, and then I flip to the next channel. To actually understand the Dharma with our heart may take blood, sweat, tears, time, determination. 
It's not a frivolous matter. So here is in, in a young person in Japan who goes into his teacher, finally convinces him this is appropriate, shows up. And the teacher gives him a classic koan, classic place of investigation. And the koan is one that uh, Zen Master Hakuin in the 1700s in Japan really popularized. And he said, when you have two hands, you bring them together and you have the sound of a clap. What happens? What's the sound of one hand? That's the koan. What's the sound of one hand clapping? Classic, a classic koan. Now, there are lots of answers to a koan like that on the surface. But to answer a koan like that and to understand from the heart is a different matter. So this young person uh, came in and said, ah, I've got it. And the teacher said, well, show me. And so he began to play an imaginary flute. The teacher said, no, not that one will do. Sorry. Try it again. So then the student goes back and he is listening and listening and trying to think what, what, what's the sound of one hand? You know, busy waving his hands or listening, whatever. And he hears water dropping. Water dropping. He says, ah, that's it. And he comes back to the teacher and says, ah, got it. Blop. 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 The teacher says, what are you doing? What's that? Well, it's the sound of water dropping. That's the sound of one hand. He says, sorry. Back again. Back again. Back again. You know, as human beings, we all like to know, we like to be praised, we like to, we like to have people affirm us, we like to have the easy way. We have a culture right now where everybody wants to be affirmed, whether they actually deserve it or not. But in this kind of koan work, it's about the genuineness of the heart, the, the total connectedness of the heart. And what's the point of praising someone if they're half-hearted, if they're insincere? Now, on the other side, of course, you know, out of skillful means, we do our very best to encourage people to keep going, to keep going, to keep going. But if someone is really interested in what is the root of the matter, and they haven't really gotten down to the root of the matter, it's very important to not take a half answer. It's very important to not take an answer that is given seeking approval, but to encourage, to push, to drive, to inspire people to look into the nature of their own heart-mind and see what is at the root, and then to express, to embody that root. And it's not easy. It's not easy. So sometimes when people are really genuinely working on a, a deep, spiritual matter, and you can see they have not solved it for themselves. That there's still dissatisfaction, there's still mind answer, there's still a partial answer, there's still a three-quarter answer to not accept it. Say more. Look more deeply. Look more deeply. Look more deeply. 
So it's not an endless process. I mean, it's all upaya, but it's not an endless process. Perfection is the enemy of the good. But an, a moment of complete, genuine, wholehearted carries more weight than all the talking and thinking and ideas. So working on the sound of one hand working on the sound of the universe, working on the sound of our heart, working on the sound of the source of all things. We must must touch that source, which is not a thing. And yet, it's our life.